I was just thinking what if this was the last time I ever saw you what should I say what could I leave you that would be sure to end up when it all burns away Cause it all burns away When I hold all my hopes And discard all my fears Push aside broken promises Smiles and the tears The regrets Disappointments The miles and the years What is left must be real What is left must be love Twenty five years. I know it might be tough to think of it this way, but it feels like literally yesterday we were in the basement with Brian Fisher and a bunch of guys trying to figure out how to bring college back. Who would have thought 25 years later the ripple would be across the country? I think back to what Hudson Link was when it started, and I look around the room and I see an incredible wide array of supporters. I see an incredible group of board of directors that we have. But when this started, everybody was in there just pulling this thing together. There's a very common process that happens for board of directors at Hudson Link. You get a phone call from Sean, he tells you about some idea he has. And then you talk to another board member and you realize they got a phone call also. <laughs> And then you realize there's a board meeting coming up in about a month or so and that there's going to be a vote. And 99% of the time, it's about buying another house, expanding into another prison, doing something that we just don't have the money to do. But the one thing I know is as a group of board of directors, we've always found a way to get the money. We've always found a way to launch a program. We've never really failed at any of them because... When we say yes and we hand the keys off to the staff, they take passion and pride in touching people's lives and giving them an opportunity that means so much to them because many of our staff went through Hudson Link. And so, you know, someone ahead of them paid it forward for them and they approach it like no job that they'll probably ever have again because they're being able to pass it on. It's amazing that you've been able to build a team like that around you that sees that passion. We're now in six prisons. We have over 680 men and women currently enrolled in pre-college, two-year, four-year programming. We're directly connecting to other programs, Cornell, Bard, John Jay, these other programs that are now in the state. We're all collaborating and working together. We're helping other states replicate, we're helping other programs grow. We're now creating construction projects where formerly incarcerated men and women are building properties for other returning formerly incarcerated women to live in them. We have a clothing store, an exclusive shopping experience with no cash register. 11 different college partners. We have over 50 formerly incarcerated men and women that went through the program now here tonight. Thank you so much for coming out. I entered the prison system in the 80s. By the 90s, all the political platforms were based on getting tough on crime. Thugs who take cars at gunpoint should sit in a cell so long that when they get out, they're gonna be too darn old to drive. We had a big push for more prisons. More prisons, more prisons. Lock them up, throw away the key mentality. You will be put away and put away for good. The prison population started rising. There was not much to do while in prison. Just sit there right away and just do your time. When they took Pell and Tap away in 94, the colleges came in and just packed up their supplies and their books, and you just felt the hope being drawn out of that prison. 
I was the last guy in the state of New York to ever get a bachelor's degree through the government-funded Pell Grant. The man who was responsible for the master's program, Bill Weber, I went to him and I said, Bill, if we have no bachelor's degree anymore, then we will have no master's degrees. And he said to me, you know, you like to fix things, John. Why don't you fix it? When I landed in Sing Sing, they were a group of old timers that already had their degrees, started to brainstorm about how to create a college program. And I had so many credits already that they started including me in those conversations. And I remember some of those guys, John Mandela and John Valverde and Mervyn Otero, these guys that were just building this from the ground up. And then the warden, Brian Fisher, popped in and said, hey, I felt it when college was taken away. How do we bring it back? I remember feeling like this was just a big waste of time. We're not even allowed to make phone calls. We don't have the internet. We don't have a fax machine. We have no money. So I kind of sat in the back and just watched it unfold to a place where, wow, we're gonna create a college program in a maximum security prison. And you know, little did I know, 25 years later, we'd be replicated all over the world. It was one of those moments that things just came together. My recollection was Bill Weber clearing the table, putting Sing Sing in the middle, and just drawing circles. Yup and said, these are the seven closest colleges. And four <laughs> months later, Nyack yep. College was in there yep. planning to launch a college program. Yeah. Yep. We were meeting pretty regularly. We had some outside volunteers. We had the warden himself, college partners, trying to figure out how to make this work. And while we were going through this conversation for two years, we heard through the prison grapevine that the women at Bedford had actually figured it out and had a consortium of colleges that were teaming up to deliver credit-bearing college work at Bedford Hills. The college program at Bedford Hills got started in 1997. A group of women who had been in college lost their chance to finish their degrees when the Pell and Tap funding had been taken away. They met with the superintendent, Elaine Lord. They got together a consortium of colleges and the college program was born. They called it College Bound. The College Bound administrators put together a document that was literally sent over to the men in Sing Sing. This is what we've done, this is how it's working, this is how we pay for things. All right, well now we have a game plan. We have the playbook. It gave us what we needed to get past that hurdle. And we launched months later with naming of Hudson Link, creating the nonprofit, and starting classes. That launched in 1998, and then the first graduating class was 2001. It was driven and brought to fruition by incarcerated men and that has always remained in the DNA. People were hungry for education. This was like a family. And one person looked out for the next person. And I still think that that's the mission of Hudson Link, to help others better themselves. Twenty-five years ago, I was at Greenhaven Correctional Facility, and I was trying to figure a way how to get to Sing Sing to get to the college program. College for me, it was like an oasis in a desert. It opened my eyes, and it showed me that there's a lot more out there in the world. When I got to the program in 2005, it was a finishing college. You had to have some type of college credits. In 2008, we changed over to opening up other programs, and yeah, let's take on other men and women who want to go to college. We're no longer a finishing program. The idea of growing it from that stable spot at Sing Sing where it's starting to take hold, are we gonna try another facility? Now we're in six different prisons. Wow. Not only are we in six facilities serving over 600 students, we also have released about 1,500 alumni back to society. The shift from having more students that are released out into the world made us as an organization shift into more reentry support. So this is why having the New Beginnings program, which is the housing, the case manager position, the finish line positions, the community engagement manager positions, we had to address those needs and see what do folks really need. Those things, coupled with the credentials that comes with the degree, is why we have a 98% success rate. We have given over a thousand AA and BA degrees. Less than 2% of our students have returned to prison in 25 years. We've created an avenue for students that never thought that college would be a part of their future to get involved, complete it, get released, and change the direction of their entire life. To see how Hudson Link embraces the changes, embraces the core of helping a person wherever they're at and with whatever they need is the fundamental that was instilled in us when we began. 
those who came before us and taught us how to do it are still doing it out here where they wanted us to be. Well, I don't know about you, but I live for moments like this, right? I remember doing time, hard time, with a lot of the men in this room. And what I want to tell you is that just 19 months ago, I didn't know what my future consisted of or would consist of, right? But, you know, I was fortunate enough while I was serving a life sentence for a crime that I did not commit, I was fortunate enough to be seen. And the governor gave me executive clemency September 9th, 2021. And so I had to figure out what my future would consist of. What I was coming home to, in just three weeks, I had to plan my life. And the reason why I'm on the stage right now is to tell you that the only reason why I was able to do that is because Hudson Link invested in me, right? And without me even knowing, Hudson Link was planning my destiny. And so when I got out, I was able to hit the road and run. Hudson Link gave me purpose and purpose can help us get through anything. I left prison 19 months ago, but I didn't leave Hudson Link. Hudson Link is a lifestyle. It's a family. It's a thing, <laughs> right? 25 years, over 1,500 people released. Recidivism is dropping like this. Nobody else can do that. And it's, we're the product. We're the product. We're the ones who are making this success because all of you, funders, board members, supporters, docs, you believed in us. And for believing in us, we're going to continue to make you proud. Right? I want to leave you with this. Hudson Link has taught us how to win. Keep winning. I was sentenced to 19 years when I was 19 years old, so naturally my first thought was, my life is over. It was like I felt like I lost hope. I heard about Hudson Link when I first got to the facility. The older guys, they seen from my behavior that I was trying to find hope, but I really didn't have any. They knew that education was the key to finding hope for the future. And my young mind was like, nah. It took about 12 years. I felt alone for a long time. And when I got to college, I felt like my mind had freedom to roam. So I was looking forward to going there every day. I was looking forward to writing the papers. That's when I like found myself and that it's okay to be who I am and have the questions I have and seek the knowledge I'm looking for. That's when I started to see hope. That's when everything started to get better. When I was released, it felt like I was dreaming. It felt like I was running for the last 16 years and I finally get to sit down. When I went and saw Kiki, I heard her name when I was inside. Everybody kept saying Kiki, Kiki, Kiki. So when I saw Kiki, I'm like, you're the one with the laptop? And it was like, that's all I was worried about. Access to information. That's what I was about inside. I had these 1912 encyclopedias that I did all of my research from. To have access to a laptop was all I was worried about. But when I first got to the house, it's interesting. Like, I've never felt safe in my life. When I got here, the quietness at night was crazy. I couldn't even sleep. That feeling of being safe is something I had to get used to over the weeks. Living in this house has allowed me the breath to know that it's going to be OK. I found that time to get my real estate license. I'm studying now to get my personal training certificate. Well, the hope for my future really is I never had my own place. To be able to sit down in my own living room and eat popcorn and not worry. Just popcorn in my living room. <laughs>
That's what I want. I remember telling Sean on June 21st, 2022, I wanted to drive my own car to work. I said that in like February. I mean, just being on the road felt like freedom. And I wanted that. This house and the safety that it offers is really the X factor. It gives me like an on-ramp. It helps me get into the speed of life and provides me the time to pursue things that would set me up for a life that I want. If you're seeing or listening to this, it's likely that your heart is already in the right place to help this great organization. My name is Alpha Roberts, and I'm the direct and successful product of the dedicated efforts of Hudson Link for Higher Education in Prison. This year, Hudson Link celebrates 25 years of providing college education, life skills, and reentry support to currently and formerly incarcerated people so that they can make a positive impact on their own lives, their families, and communities, resulting in lower rates of recidivism and higher rates of employment, community, regeneration, cohesiveness, and reciprocity. That's why this year's theme of Unbounded Legacies honors our past while centering our interconnected futures. It refers to having limitless opportunities that come with education and represent our commitment to relationships and to holding the door open for others as we create generational, social, and intellectual wealth. Unbounded Legacies demonstrates that while Hudson Link was started by incarcerated people 25 years ago, our students and our organization extend far beyond the prison walls. With your support, continued efforts can be made to aid in the healthy transition of formerly incarcerated people like myself. Along with helping me with social and life skill, Hudson Link provided an opportunity for me to acquire my associate's degree in behavioral science. I believe that acquiring an education has changed the way I see myself, others, and my worldview. Hudson Link helped me reclaim my dignity and realize my potential also, since my release, I was granted a healthy and safe place to live through Hudson Link's New Beginnings Transitional Housing Program. This opportunity not only offered me a place to live, but the ability to make better life choices. Therefore, I'm asking you to support or continue supporting Hudson Link. You can do so now by filling out the form below and clicking the donate button. As we look ahead to another 25 years, we hope to do even more for currently and formerly incarcerated people working to change their lives through the transformative power of education. So again, I ask you to fill out the form below and click the donate button now and help us reach our goal and support the people we serve. For those of you that were at Sing Sing, Bill Weber was a huge piece of the work that happened there at that facility, and largely instrumental in how Hudson Link got launched as well. Bill Weber is no longer with us, but in his memory we've named an award in his honor, and it's the Bill Weber Community Service Award. And this year we would like to honor Cola Me, a synagogue here in Westchester that has been in the trenches with us for over 25 years. When I got out and the Hudson Link board asked if I would speak at the synagogue, Lori had to drive me. I didn't even have a license yet. I borrowed a suit from somebody and I got down there and the welcome was just incredible and I never left. I've been going back ever since and they've been in our corner and Rabbi Shear is here today and I would just love to have you come up and accept this award on, on behalf of the synagogue. When I walked in here tonight, I thought, oh my God, I am underdressed. <laughs> but then, I might have felt underdressed, but I did not feel undervalued. Why? Because there's nobody here who feels undervalued. And that is amazing. In my tradition, we believe that every human being is created in the image of God, but you build a world where everybody is created in that image, and I am so honored to be with you. Thank you. 
Because of Hudson Link, I was offered housing. I didn't really have anywhere to go, and this place has been a safe haven to come home to. I was nervous, I was excited. The weight that's taken off your shoulders the minute you step out the gate is indescribable. Just having a house to come home to where you had your own keys, after not having that for so long was just overwhelmingly joyful. That feeling of peace was phenomenal. Hi, Being around somebody that I was familiar with inside was comforting. They made me feel so welcome. They take you grocery shopping, they buy all the supplies for the house, but then they help you transition into being responsible. We all clean together. Like if they're cooking one night, like, hey, I made this, you want some? I'll be like, yeah, I'm coming up. We have conversations like, who's got the dishes tonight? Whose day is it gonna be to do laundry? Who's taking out the garbage? We all work on that together. When I knew I was being released, I didn't know where I was going. Once I got that yes that I was coming here, part of me could not believe that this was my home. It was like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. Come into here and feel the welcome and the love and just know that you can be yourself and that it's okay. With no judgment, that made me feel comfortable and know that I was safe here. I'm a caregiver. I take care of a lot of older people. I take them out, I help them shower, dress them, feed them. I got my job and I'm gonna go back into school for the summer, so this was like a new startup for me. I earned my bachelor's degree, I wanna go for my master's. I wanna get it in social work because I could help with advocating for women who are victims of domestic violence. I also am very passionate about kids in foster care because of my own children. I'm really thankful that they chose Mo's house to let me live. This place has been life-changing. When I see that painting, the first thing that I noticed was that the eyes were looking up. So it's inspiring. You always want to see what's on the horizon and move forward. It just lets me know, you got this, keep going, don't stop, it's okay. Every year the painting gets passed along and it's basically just the inspiration to show that you were acknowledging some positive things that you have done and next year you're to pass it along. When people come home and they see this painting, I hope they are inspired and they have a sense of comfort. And it's like, you're not alone. We're a community and you're welcome. Beyond the Block is a speaking series that gives guys inside a prison the opportunity to share their ideas with an outside audience, which is not something that's common in here. There's a 30-foot wall surrounding the jail. It might as well be a dome. Once you come in here, your voice doesn't get out. There's a lot of talent behind these bars. This is an opportunity for guys to say, hey, you know what? Yes, I screwed up, but I still have value. Everybody knows we're in a maximum security prison, but we want it to feel like the focus is on the message, not on where it's being delivered from. Turning it to a stage gives the guys an opportunity to be the center of attention, not because of the notoriety of their crime, but actually for the value of what they have to say. This will be the first time some guys are on stage. This will be the first time some guys are part of a production. It gives them the opportunity to come up with something creative. Think that thing through. How do you problem solve? How do you come up with ideas that are creative and good? This is rehabilitative work. It gives a sense of purpose and people to see that we're regular people who have qualities that are valuable to society and to our families. Every single part of this production came from the men at Sing Sing, naming it, doing the artwork for it. It's just kind of like delivering a voice to folks in any way they see fit for an entire day and capturing it to share with the rest of the world. Welcome to Beyond the Block. Out of the 17 years that I've been incarcerated, this is the first and only event of its kind where so much attention is put on the ideas of those who have been incarcerated. Now, some would say that our criminal legal system is woefully broken, but I would disagree. 
I say our criminal legal system is operating just as it was intended to. We get so encased in these boxes and in these cages that sometimes it's hard to realize that the work that you're doing really matters. An event like this gives us that opportunity to show the world that what I'm doing does matter and it can affect people. One of the things that you always want to have is a voice. You always want to be able to be heard, especially when you haven't been. I wanted to be able to say something and I wanted to be a part of making some formidable change in the environment I came from. In here, we become dependent on so many people. But being on that stage, I feel like I am in control. And everything that takes place from that moment forward is within my hands. On October 26, 1994, I was removed from my home at the age of 12 and placed into the foster care system. And today, 29 years later, I've yet to return home. Writing this piece was difficult because I had to dig deep and deal with emotions that I was still wrestling with. So being able to take those feelings and bring them to the surface to where I'm able to speak about it, it was challenging. But with the fellas here, we all supported each other and we were able to come together and build together as a community to get to where we are today. <laughs> Yo, I'm not gonna lie, it's just so many of y'all. <laughs> oh my God, all right. The moment I was incarcerated, I've been on a mission to change my life. I want to be surrounded by people who are thriving just like me. This is just one of those things, like one of those benchmarks. I feel like it gives me more motivation. I feel like I accomplished something. Feel good. Coming up, we have a brother named Mr. T.C. Terrence Carter, and he's going to talk about how mental health reentry programs are very important upon release. Mr. Terrence Carter. I want you to picture a 13-year-old child sitting in a bathtub with a knife in their hand as they stare at their wrist contemplating suicide. That was me. And I thought killing myself was my only option as I struggled with an undiagnosed mental illness. There's a lot of shame involved with being in prison, regardless of whatever your successes may be in here. So I'm trying to move past that being able to talk about something that means something to me helps me stay in touch with my human side. It helps heal. With the unconditional love and support of the strongest, most resilient person that I know, <sighs> my mom, Cheryl. Thank you, mom. I just want her to be proud of me again. That's all. I just want her to see her son again. Almost 30 years later, I've been given hope. I stand here in front of you today as the Hudson Link Mercy College Class of 2022 Valedictorian. There was a time when I believed in and was fueled by pain and agony. But now, I believe in the capacity for change. Over the last 20 some odd years of being in prison, I started to identify in myself my own behaviors that was causing me a lot of pain and agony. I realized that the world wasn't hurting me. I was the one hurting the world. I was the one hurting me. If I want things different, I have to start doing things different. I want to leave a legacy of honor. I do not want to be remembered for the negative behaviors that I've done in the past. I owe a debt to society. I owe a debt to my family. I owe a debt to myself. And those debts will be repaid over the remainder of my life. When I had my freedom, no one heard my voice. But I come here in a place like this and they afford me an opportunity so the world can hear my voice, so the world can see who I really am. I hope that they see that a person can change. You give a person an opportunity, if you allow them to see something other than what they thought they knew, it's a great possibility that they become something a lot better. I think if folks just realize that we could take places like this and build something so much better, using the folks that live there, and the folks that work there to collaborate, to create things that could change the whole world. One. Two. Three. Four. I am a champion. When life now we down, don't quit. I get up and I try again. I am a champion. As long as I got air in my lungs, I will fight and never give in. I am a champion. From out the ashes, I will rise in the sky as a phoenix. So watch, my friend. I am a champion. Yes, you are a champion. A champion, we are champions. Here's a story about a boy who didn't make it. For our daddy died in the hospital, we left him with emotional scars. Through the 
trials and tribulations in the prison bars refuse to let himself become a victim in a fallen star. Look into his eyes, you can truly see. Fire. Right through his heart, watch it burst free. To so never quit and take all your destiny. Shout with me. I am a champion. When life knocks me down, I'm quick. I get up and I try again. I am a champion. As long as I got air in my lungs, I will fight and never give in. I am a champion. From out the ashes, I rise in the sky as a phoenix, so watch my friend. I am a champion. Yes, you are. A champion. A champion. We are champions. Here's a story about a girl who used to doubt herself alone was cold world. She didn't have anybody's help. Through the valleys and the peaks, the system made it through. She never gave up hope. She's a winner, now she finished school. Look into her eyes, you can truly see. Fire. Raging through her heart, watch it burst free. Fire. To never quit and take all your destiny. Shout with me, I am a champion. When life knocks me down, don't quit. I get up and I try again. Sing it with me, come on. As long as I got air in my lungs, I will fight and never give in. From out the ashes, I'll rise in the sky as a phoenix, so watch my friend. I am a champion. Yes, you are. A champion. A champion. A champion. We are champions. We are the champions. The mighty champions. The mighty champions. I'm a champion. It's always a wonderful thing to um, see the women, um, and I've always called them women. I see them every once in a while because I do get involved in um, trying to make changes out there, and. Um, and I hope I keep getting involved, and they've been part of that. And I guess that's what is so important about what happened to Bedford. I would put my life in their hands at any time, and people need to realize that. What you might have done once is not what you are. So the women can do it. We may be the small little piece, but we can make change. <laughs> the award tonight really is twofold. It's designed, the award itself was designed to say something about the people who leave prison and go on and do something dramatic. They are examples of what can happen if given a chance. There's a second piece of this, though, and I have to, uh, have to say this. Behind great men are great women. <laughs> so if you would come up for your award, um, it's in my name, but it's really in your name, what you have accomplished. Please, come up. Um, you know, this is, <laughs> this is wonderful and also a little strange. Um, I'm four years out of prison and 37 years in, so who would have imagined that what we built back then would lead to change in the whole country? And I want to say we knew. That's right. Okay. We said... Our first goal was to have our first college program, college classes in two years. We did it in one. And the second goal was to change the narrative. And that included behind, we, we didn't want college programs to depend on building the way we had to build. We wanted college programs that were publicly funded and therefore available throughout the system. And we also wanted college programs for our children and for your children that could be affordable so that they didn't end up in the prison that we were in, okay? 
So our vision of college was always more than just a rehabilitative program, even though it is rehabilitative. It was always about a change that was going to fundamentally address both what we felt responsible for in the harm that we had caused, and also in the harms of the society that could provide a change that would bring hope and redemption to all of us. Our capacity to do that is what prisons should be about, and mostly they're not, but they need to be more and more, which is what's so wonderful about the fact that this community includes so many people who work in the prisons, who run prisons, because it gives us that scent, sense of a vision that's really different than the day-to-day -day of, what, of what we're going to have. The healing comes when there's a coming back together, and we, yes, we, we heal that rent of that cloth, and we say that the harm that's been done, we've done the work to change ourselves, to redeem ourselves, to give back to the society that we hurt, and then to have that society embrace us and in, in the way that we can see that embracing here. I want to take a step over, and I want you to take a step over. Because I need to make room for Ali Muhammad and Kathy Boudin. They are a huge part of who we are. They are a huge part of what Hudson Link is 25 years later. And we need to honor our ancestors. You know? And so I'm extremely happy to be a mentee of them both. And I'm, I know that they're in this room and looking down on us and saying, yes, yes, yes. Honor the woman. Honor the woman. <laughs> yes. And, uh, we certainly appreciate Hudson Link, his board of directors. And, I, I, you know, it's, it's kind of strange, but it's not strange. You know, the program that um, Kathy and I created along with Geraldine, the Center for Justice, is a model of what we did inside prison. The, the model of Hudson Link is a model of what we did inside prison. So we're not doing anything different. You know, it is something that works when you have docs working together with community folks, with academia. That's the secret sauce because we can't do it alone. We have to work together. And so let's continue to do that for the next 25 years. Thank you. You are in the boutique that started out in the basement of Hudson Lake, and clearly the baby has grown, and now it is a storefront. It's a place where our students enter into this space after leaving incarceration to give them a head start with professional style clothing and other apparel that will allow them to be successful on their continuous journeys. To be able to recreate the space into what it is now was like a dream come true. Everything from the gold fixtures to the lavender is to represent royalty. I want everybody to know that's really what they are. This is your time and this is your show. Being released is just overwhelming in itself to not know what to expect. So I accept every single person with open arms because I'm also a formerly incarcerated woman. So for them to see me on the outside, that's like a family reunion. Just like everyone shuts down the city for Beyonce, well, I shut it down for our alumni because that's what they deserve. I just want them to know, like, this is yours. You're worthy, you deserve it. And to know that you can have anything you want here and you don't have to pay for anything and there's no cash registers. Just restoring that dignity and also allowing them to see themselves in a different light other than wearing prison attire. Being able to come into a space to be able to say, hey, let me put on jeans again. Let me be able to put on a suit that I've never owned a suit or wore a suit. And to get outfitted by someone like a personal stylist, which, you know, <laughs> it means a lot. I just let folks just do them and what makes them feel safe and at home. Just a freedom to express yourself any way you like. And just know that it's not the clothes that really make you. You make the clothes. This is just giving you a start on to a brighter future.
it was really hard to decide who we wanted to give the painting to. But I fought Kiki in the boutique because that's like an extension of everything that they're offering us with the housing and the education. And I thought everybody could be a part of that painting if we put it in a common area. <laughs> It's an honor to have the painting here because this is home. And for it to be a space that the students coming home can see it, it means so much. By having it here, it's representative of entering to everybody's home, their safe space. So I will cherish it for a very long time, for a year, <laughs> until it goes on to the next space. I hope when they see the painting, they see themselves and they just feel really empowered to just enter into a next chapter. That it's just a new beginning. It's empowering within itself to know that you have a whole community out there that loves you and supports you and you are a part of. I just want you to know there's several ways that you could get involved with Hudson Link. We created a boutique, um, which is located at 25 State Street, which is right down the block from our office. Um, and it's an amazing place if you haven't seen it yet. And it pretty much gives our students returning back to their communities a sense of uh, empowerment. They could come there and get their first set of professional style clothing, amongst other things. Being a formerly incarcerated woman, I know what it means to come back to your community and standing on pride and want to feel a sense of dignity and knowing that you have something that belongs to you. So when this space was created, the idea was to, have, to give a sense of purpose, but I also wanted our students to feel like a big, warm hug. I mean, a chocolate hug, to be specific. Um, so I couldn't do this without all the donations from the community, because you actually get the Kiki experience without a cash register. You know what I mean? And it could not happen if I didn't have all you guys' support that's in the room today. So you ask me, Kiki, how can we get involved? Of course, your donations, first and foremost. It's your volunteer efforts. You can always reach out to me if you want to volunteer, because I always need people to um, basically come in, accept the clothing. You can sort. You could do anything. I just need your time and your dedication. And the, the next thing you can do is advocacy work. We do a lot of advocating in Albany. That's another way to get involved. Everything is not money, but it is money. So I just want to let you know. <laughs> there are many ways to support, and I need you all. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Um, there's many ways to support us, okay? But thank you for being here tonight, and continue to enjoy the rest of the program. One person that is not here is Harry Belafonte who every year came to visit the prison. Mr. B has been talking about the men at Sing Sing forming a choral group and singing one of his songs for 10 years. In the height of his career, he wanted to produce some songs from the original Chain Gang. And, ca and those Chain Gang songs and capture the culture that was going away. And everyone in his circle said, oh my God, it's career suicide. Do not do it. And against everyone that told him not to, he produced that album. And what you're going to see next is one of those songs that the men sang in his honor. And he got to hear it the other night. He's blind now and bedridden, and he cried through the whole thing. He's so honored to have been involved and that the men got a chance to sing that song for him. Swing that hammer. Swing that hammer, swing it higher above your head, making little ones out of big ones. Hammer kills you, almost dead. If I ever leave this chain gang, I'll be coming home once more. Mama, mama, don't you 
scorn me. Do not turn me from your door. Swing it high, boys. High. Swing it low, boys. Low. Swing that hammer till you dead. Oh. Swing it high, boys. High. Swing it low, boys. Low. Swing that hammer till you dead. When I left the mm -hmm. dusty Georgie, all I had was mm -hmm. one thin dime. Mm -hmm. Now I'm back in the mm -hmm. old Georgie. Mm -hmm. Now I've got to mm -hmm. serve this time. We are so grateful for everyone here tonight. And before we close, we want to thank you all for your support, not just for tonight, not just for this evening's event, but for the last 25 years. Hudson Link could not be where it is today doing this amazing work if it not for the tireless, timeless efforts of so many people here in this room. As a former student myself, an alumni of the program, and now our executive director, I want to thank all of you. Supporters, sponsors, our board of directors, amazing college partners, our professors, the entire New York State Department of Corrections, and the whole Hudson Lake staff. Your support means the world to us as we head into the next 25 years. Thank you and have a great night.